Hello, everyone, and welcome to my PASIC 2021 virtual session, Seeing and Hearing Embodied Musical Spaces in Jacob Druckmann's Reflections on the Nature of Water. Bodily gestures are important for communication. These gestures can range from a smile to a hand wave, or be as passive as a micro facial expression or a glance. Gesture plays a critical part in communication. Gesture aids verbal communication to show iconic symbols, explain metaphors, create emphasis, create spatial comparisons, or by using a culturally accepted emblem, such as giving a thumbs up or thumbs down. In music, physical gesture is equally important. Physical gestures can aid in projecting meaning with sung text and are just as important to communicate emotional and meaning in music. Most of the existing research on gesture and music focuses on musical meaning, communication, or creating electronic and computer music controllers. This paper expands this research by exploring how a performer's body can reveal latent musical properties that become visually apparent to the audience. This methodology draws upon work in transpositional combinations, inversional symmetry, fuzzy voice leading, and offers a new concept of fuzzy transpositional combinations. By observing the performer's sound producing gestures, audiences can understand more about a piece and not only rely solely on a performer's facial or ancillary gestures. What is gesture? Previous writings on gesture and music have caused confusion because of their lack of definition. Is gesture referring to sound, to movements, to metaphorical characters within the music? Addressing this issue, Jensenius et al. understand gesture as a bridge between movement and meaning. Using the term gesture rather than movement is beneficial because it addresses both physical movement and meaning. Therefore, bypassing the Cartesian divide between matter and mind. Gesture can be defined by how it's used. Gestures can be used for communication, control, or metaphor. Communicative gestures are those used in social interactions. Control gestures are used in computational and interactive systems. And metaphors are used when a gesture works as concepts that project physical movement, sound, or other types of perception to cultural topics. Metaphors are the primary subject of gesture in musical studies. Most music theoretical research has addressed gestures in music as a metaphor, something with agency that exists within the score. Robert Hatton explores what he calls the aural gesture, defined as a significant energetic shaping of sound throughout time. Alexandra Pierce believes that performers and theorists can deepen their musical understanding through movement. Pierce addresses embodied metaphors that are key concepts in Shankarian analysis and develops a Shankarian methodology such that the analyst can draw upon his or her embodied experience of the music and forming a reading. In this methodology, the body informs analysis and performance, but through metaphor, the performer's sound producing gestures are not taken into account. Rather, the feeling of the body is her primary concern. Steve Larson discusses musical gestures, what he calls musical forces, as an embodied metaphor, which stemmed from Lakoff and Johnson's work on conceptual metaphor theory. However, as mentioned earlier, when discussing gestures in music, it can be hard to differentiate whether the author is discussing physical movement or metaphorical actors within the score. To address this while still using the term gesture, we can view a musical gesture as one that is an action pattern that produces music, that is encoded in music, or that is made in response to music. Qualifications to the term musical gesture can be added whenever needed to avoid misunderstanding. For example, one can speak about sound producing gestures, sound modifying gestures, sound accompanying gestures, sonic gestures, playing gestures, and so on. Using gesture in this way allows for the flexibility needed to deal with the complex and abstract nature of music, the body, and the mind. Types of gesture in music. 
there are four functional categories of musical gestures. These categories all address physical movement of musicians. The four categories are sound producing, sometimes called instrumental gestures or effective gestures, communicative, sometimes referred to as semiotic gestures, sound facilitating, sometimes called ancillary or phrasing gestures, and sound accompanying. Sound producing gestures are ones that allow the performer to produce a sound on the instrument. Communicative gestures can be from performer to performer or from performer to perceiver. These are generally facial expressions. Sound facilitating gestures deal with the perception of the sound. Schutz and Manning explored these gestures in percussion performance, finding that though these gestures do not alter the acoustic properties, they do significantly influence the listener's perception of them. Sound accompanying gestures follow the music. The most common example would be dancing. Playing an instrument mimetically is another example of a sound accompanying gesture. In this paper, gestures in the musical score and the physical gestures that are used to produce them will be considered inextricably linked, and the term gesture will be used to refer to both. Additionally, this paper will only focus on functional musical gestures that are sound producing, since these will remain consistent from performance to performance and performer to performer. Sound producing gestures and music analysis. Previous articles have explored sound producing gestures and their relationships to compositional processes. In his article, Bodily Hearing, Physiological Metaphors and Musical Understanding, Andrew Mead discusses how a performer's instrument can physically reflect imagined musical spaces. The relationship between a performer's body and the instrument will make certain aspects of the score more salient and thus susceptible to analysis. He discusses the role of the keyboardist's hands in performing Webern's variations for piano. Mead argues that the performer and the audience can see structural aspects of the music through the way the body plays in the work. More recently, sound producing gestures captured and analyzed using Vicon motion capture and audio analysis have been used to explore aspects of form and Chopin preludes. They note that a performer's physical realization of a piece may be seen to reflect his or her conceptual interpretation of the music. They conclude that compositional structure is embodied. Understanding how musical information is generated through performer's gestures and communicated to the audience could subsequently aid the computational analysis of music by providing stable and repeating points within performance from which to investigate. These studies are supported by recent research in music psychology, which suggests that perceptual similarity has been proposed as an important feature of how music is processed and understood. Unlike the piano, the marimba is often played directly facing the audience, making visual aspects of performance more apparent than pianists whose bodies are slightly blocked from the audience view by their instrument. Because of the unobstructed view of the performer, Paired with an instrument where imagined musical spaces can be visualized on the instrument, the potential for audiences to see musical relationships such as transpositional combinations and inversional symmetry is more likely when compared to other instruments. The sound producing gestures of the marimbus highlight important relationships among musical gestures in the fifth movement, profound, of reflections on the nature of water for solo marimba. The methodology used in this analysis builds on prior work in transpositional combinations, transformational voice leading, and offers an extension through fuzzy transpositional combinations. Throughout, pitch space and order pitch intervals play a central role in this analysis. These elements are analyzed and compared to the performer's sound producing gestures. Because ordered pitch intervals are maintained after transformations are applied to these gestures, the performer also maintains the same mallet spacing and similar body positioning during each gesture. When a musical gesture is transposed, the transposition of the gesture is visually salient when played on the marimba. When a gesture has inversional symmetry, the performer must place his or her body at the axis of symmetry. Seeing the sound producing gestures of the performers adds to the salience of these gestures and reveals musical relationships. 
transpositional combination, abbreviated TC, is the combination of a set with one or more transpositions of itself to create a larger set. Sets with the TC property can be divided up into two or more subsets related by transposition. This is demonstrated in example one. The TC property does not require related sets to retain contour or temporal ordering and applies to any realization of a pitch set. Most sets that feature the TC property also inherently contain inversional symmetry. Inversional symmetry, abbreviated IS, occurs when a set has an axis of symmetry. Inversionally related sets also create an axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry can occur in pitch class space or more concretely in pitch space. Inversional symmetry, abbreviated IS, occurs when a set has an axis of symmetry. Inversionally related sets also create an axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry can occur in pitch class space or more concretely in pitch space. Importantly, much of the IS and profound is grounded in the more visually apparent pitch space. In this way, the performer's body makes inversionally related sets more salient. Sets can have implicit TC or IS properties. Sets with implicit properties means that TC and IS are considered in regard to pitch class space and unordered sets. For example, 0167 implicitly contains the TC property and can be generated by combining 01 at six half steps or 06 at one half step, as shown in example one. Set 0257 is a set that implicitly contains inversional symmetry as shown in pitch class space in example 2a and made explicit in pitch space in example 2b. The musical surface can make implicit properties of a set more or less explicit. Explicit TC and IS must deal with pitch space as well as the compositional dimensions of time, horizontal, and space vertical. Example three demonstrates three variations of a pitch set that has the TC property, ranging from most explicit to least explicit. Example 3A is the most explicit of these three because the whole step transposed six half steps or the tritone transposed a whole step. Sets contain the same ordered pitch intervals. When example 3A is performed on marimba, the right hand and the left hand are played using the same intervals with the same contour, which would be visually salient to the audience. As will be demonstrated later, explicit inversional symmetry is also visually apparent when performed on the marimba because the hands create mirror images of one another. The performer will often place the center of his or her body at the axis of symmetry to execute these types of gestures, further reinforcing the mirrored actions of the hands and arms. Some sets contain both transpositional combination and inversional symmetry properties. When deciding on which of the properties to discuss, the visual aspect of the performance will be taken into account. For example, if a set implicitly contains both TC and IS, but the musical surface and performer's body creates a mirror image, inversional symmetry is more musically significant because it is visually apparent through the performer. Because of this, all musically significant transpositional combinations look like the same physical gesture at a higher or lower part of the instrument to the audience when executed because they require the same physical motions. And all musically significant IS will appear as mirrored images. Throughout, the performer's body will aid the audience in seeing and thus hearing transpositional combinations and inversional symmetry. In this analysis, priority will be granted to TC or IS based on which is more visually salient through the performer. There are many instances of inversional relationships that are symmetrical in the dimension of pitch space, but are obscured because the symmetry is not reflected in the dimension of time. Example four shows explicit compared to obscured IS. For the marimbas performing an obscure IS gesture, there still exists an axis of symmetry in pitch space, 
but the ordering of the notes does not form a mirror image. Like TC and IS, Obscured IS is musically significant if it is visually noticeable. Transpositions and inversions do not necessarily need to be exact for them to have a sense of transpositionness or inversionness. Strauss suggests a method of fuzzy voice leading that allows analysts to account for sets that are related by transposition or inversion by some degree. This allows theorists to account for transformations between different set classes, as well as observing transformations between sets of different cardinalities. Strauss makes a distinction between voices and lines. Voices result from an operation of some kind, and lines are formed through association, register, timbre, instrumentation, etc. This means that voices can move between different instrumental parts or in the following analysis, hands. In this methodology, the idea of fuzzy voice leading will be extended to transpositional combinations. While the TC property can be made explicit with inversionally related sets that are symmetrical, as shown in example five, the TC property cannot be made explicit through inversionally related sets that are not also inversionally symmetrical, as shown in example six. Two inversionally related O14 sets cannot reflect the TC property even when reordered, because O14 is not inherently symmetrical. Instead, these sets feature a fuzzy transposition of T8 with an offset of 2, as shown in example 7. Fuzzy TC allows closely related pitch sets with similar contours and pitch space to be considered transpositions forming a larger set. Using fuzzy transpositions in this way differs from Strauss's methodology of transformational voice leading. If two sets are related by inversion, Strauss would consider them crisp sets that result from an inversional operation. However, this analysis focuses on the importance of pitch space and how the transformations are embodied through a performer on the marimba. It is for this reason only that the idea of fuzzy TC is applicable. Additionally, voice leading does not move between different lines. As will be seen in the analysis of profound, when fuzzy TC is noted, voices are paired between hands in the order the notes appear. For a musical gesture to be considered fuzzy TC, the dimensions of space and time must be considered. The offset of the subsets must be minimal and the voice leading must not cross lines in order to preserve the visual appearance of a transposition. In performance, a fuzzy TC gesture visually looks very similar to explicit TC because the hands almost play the same things at different transpositional levels. Physical manifestation of pitch space through the performer's body is a governing criterion of fuzzy transpositional combination. In this example, the sound producing gestures reflect this sense of two sets almost related by transposition, hence fuzzy. If the same gestures are performed on an instrument, such as the flute or clarinet, it would not create a physical representation of pitch space, and therefore might be better understood from a traditional stance as an inversional operation. In profound, inversional and transpositional relationships play an important part in creating a consistent sound world. Although it has been argued that explicit transpositional combinations are more audibly salient than inversional relationships, I argue that transpositional combinations, explicit and obscured inversional relationships, as well as fuzzy transpositional combinations, are made audibly salient through the physical embodiment of musical spaces via the performer. I further argue that these transformations result in the octatonicism that has been the focus of other analyses. Druckmann viewed this piece as a small payment towards a very large debt. There were primarily two composers, Debussy and Stravinsky. It is to Debussy that I doff my hats with these reflections on his magical preludes. The composer states that each movement of this piece evokes a characteristic of water, and many have noted how the music reflects its title and the connection to Debussy's reflections in the water from his first series of images. To the author's knowledge, there are only four published analyses of reflections on the nature of water. 
Each analysis focuses on trying to understand the images evoked by the title and the musical content. The primary issue with these analyses is the cursory approach taken in each due to the lack of a strong unifying argument, each ultimately striving to highlight musical connections to the images evoked by the title. All the authors focus on referential pitch collections and the prominence of interval class two and five. Both Brunk and McDonald strive to make sense of the pitch content by fitting pitches into oxytonic collections or diatonic scales by thinking in tonal functional terms. Much attention has been on referential pitch collections because of the composer's acknowledgement and depth to Debussy in this piece. Both McDonald and Brunk also note how harmonic and motivic ideas are shared among the various movements of the piece. Throughout Profound, Druckmann uses both transpositional combinations and inversional symmetry in a variety of ways. Explicit TC and IS are used as well as fuzzy transpositional combinations and obscured mirror images. Throughout, the performer's body will be observed when performing gestures with these properties. As noted by Fang and Brunk, this movement is unique because of the lack of meter and notated measures. Durations are notated proportionally and time is represented by each line and each line lasts approximately 20 seconds. While this paper focuses on one movement of the work, the analytical model can be readily applied to other movements of the work. Unambiguous transpositional combinations are reflected in body motions that are repeated at a transposed level. By preserving ordered pitch intervals on the marimba, it is easy to hear and see TC. TC occurs unambiguously multiple times in this movement. Examples are presented from least visually and audibly salient to the most salient. Example eight shows TC occurring in space and time, but with only one hand participating. Each O2 is combined at three half steps. Because the same intervallic structure is maintained physically for each transposition in the right hand, it is visually apparent as highlighted in example nine. Examples 10a and b show the explicit TC occurrence between both hands. While explicit TC in one hand is visually apparent, explicit TC in both hands is more visually salient as seen in example 11. In this grace note gesture, each hand exhibits transpositional combinations. The 0246 set class played by each hand is a combination of a whole step transpose four half steps. Alternatively, it can be observed as four half steps transpose a whole step. Though it is possible to make a justification for viewing the operation as 02 transpose four or 04 transpose two, the preference should be given for the TC that is most visually salient. When performing this, the left hand would play the D and E with one stroke, a double lateral. The right hand would do the same, playing G and F with one gesture. Because of this, it seems more logical to group these notes together when determining the TC operation that would be most noticeable to the audience. So preference should be given to O2 at four. Example 12 examines the next example of TC occurrence in line four. Here, each hand plays an O36 gesture. Together, this 036 transposed four half steps creates the superset 013479. This can be thought of as part of an oxytonic collection, as was done with similar gestures in the first movement by McDonald. But the oxytonicism is a result of TC, as will be discussed later in this paper. Examples 13a and b highlight the third and final explicit TC occurrence in this movement. Like example 10, this gesture exhibits TC in two ways. The right hand exhibits O5 transpose the whole step, and the left hand does the same. O167 combined at a whole step is another possibility if each hand is taken simultaneously. Because this gesture is repeated many times rapidly, it is difficult to determine which version of TC would be more visually salient. As can be seen in example 14, the body position is preserved when performing. In profound, 
Conversional symmetry plays an important role. The first instance of explicit IS, example 15, occurs approximately 12 seconds in line two. As can be seen in example 16, the inversional symmetry creates a pitch access between B flat four and B natural four. The same gesture occurs again approximately 12 seconds into line seven. Explicit inversional symmetry is also used in a gesture previously noted for its TC. Example 17 shows this gesture, but annotated to show explicit IS. This gesture also creates an axis of symmetry at B flat four and B natural four. Because of the wide range exhibited in these two instances of explicit IS, it is likely that the performer would situate the center of his or her body near or at the axis of symmetry for ease of execution. The explicit TC that is paired with this explicit IS makes this a highly salient moment for both properties. TC is seen visually in both hands, is readily audible, and motion of the arms contracting towards the axis of symmetry emphasizes the inversional aspects of this gesture. This can be seen visually on the performer and the marimba in example 18. Explicit IS also ends this movement. As seen in example 19, after rolling on D4 and E4 and creating an axis of symmetry around E flat 4, the performer plays the final gesture. This final gesture is symmetrical around D4 and E flat 4, although it is not exactly the same axis of symmetry that was created by rolling on D and E, the performer would not shift the body to play the final notes, remaining in the same spot and emphasizing an axis of symmetry essentially in the same area. Because the performer does not move the placement of the feet, the axis is still visible to the audience. By visually observing the exact mirroring of the hands, along with the performer placing his or her body at the axis of symmetry, audience members might be able to discover the inversional relationships that might otherwise be less audible. As noted earlier, sets that are inversionally related create an axis and this axis can exist in pitch class space or pitch space. Throughout this work, the dimension of time for inversionally symmetrical sets is altered by reordering a single note in the right hand, so that the order of pitches in the right hand no longer correlates exactly with the left hand in time, while preserving the symmetry in registral space. This means that the performer's hands will each show inversional symmetry in registral space, like a mirrored image, but not at the same time. All of these gestures result in obscured inversional symmetry. However, because each gesture is only obscured by the placement of one pitch, it's still possible that the inversional relationships between the hands are made apparent through the performer's body. Interestingly, in all of these obscured mirror images in this movement, the left hand always maintains a descending order of pitches. In example 20, the left hand plays a descending line of F E, C sharp, and the right hand plays a line that ultimately descends as A flat, B, G. However, if the right hand was ordered G, A flat, B, the mirror image of the hands would be no longer obscured. Example 21 shows a comparison of these two orderings. Example 22 shows a similar occurrence of obscured mirror imaging. The ordered pitches for the right hand would need to be G, A flat, B, D for explicit inversional symmetry to occur. Because the ordering is instead A flat, B, G, D, the mirror image is slightly obscured. This musical gesture from example 20 is shown visually in example 23. Due to the quickness of the succession of grace notes, a sense of inversional symmetry is visually apparent. Example 24a shows a more complicated example of obscured inversional symmetry. The IS in this gesture is obscured in two ways. Not only is one note in the right hand out of order for explicit IS, the note that is out of place, D, is also an octave too high. While the inversional relationship still exists in pitch class space, this octave displacement further obscures the explicit IS. 
Druckmann could have placed this d in question down two octaves to d4, as shown in example 24b. This would still preserve the inversional relationship between the two sets, but it would destroy any remaining physical embodiment of IS. Although the explicit IS is obscured in two ways, the contrary motion that is maintained between the hands reinforces the inversional relationship present through the embodiment of the performer. In each example of obscured inversional symmetry, one note from the right hand is moved so as to obscure the mirror images of the performer's hands. However, because the mirroring is only affected by one note in the right hand every time and the inversional contour is maintained, the inversional symmetry is still salient to the observant audience member. Examples 25 and 26 show two gestures that, at first glance, exhibit transpositional combination. The set in each hand is 014, and the contour looks like the hands are transposed versions of each other. However, each hand is playing inversions of 014. In pitch space, the inversion is obscured because of the similar motion of each hand. The overall set of the gesture is 013479. This set has implicit TC properties, and TC can be achieved by 036 combined at four half steps. As can be seen in example 27, the gestures are related at I2 and I4. Since these sets are related by I2 and I4, Strauss would say these transformations are crisp, not fuzzy. However, these inversional operations switch the voice leading and do not correlate to the order the pitches are being played nor is pitch space considered as shown in example 28. When considering pitch space and the sound producing gestures that are used, these gestures look and sound more like transpositional operations. Example 29 shows how both fuzzy transpositions occurring in the gestures from example 25 and 26 are fuzzy transpositions of T7 with an offset of five. Even though the offset of this fuzzy transposition is somewhat high, the fact that two of the three voices feature the same transposition makes this a fairly consistent operation, and physically, the similar spacing of the notes and the similar contour of the hands makes this look like a transposition. Because this gesture is created with two subsets of the same set class with similar contours and pitch space that are fuzzy transpositions of one another and visually look very similar to the explicit TC gestures discussed previously, this is an example of fuzzy TC. Example 30 shows the performer playing example 26, embodying fuzzy TC. Because the two pitch class sets in these examples are the same set class and share similar physical motions to produce the sounds, there is a potential to see and hear these as fuzzy transpositional combinations. As mentioned previously, in this and other analyses, reflections on the nature of water contains elements of octatonicism throughout the work. The frequency of interval class 5 and set 013479 play a significant role in movements 1 and 2, as noted by McDonald. The same is true in profound. Druckmann achieves a homogeneous sound in this movement through the use of TC, explicit and obscured in original symmetry, as well as fuzzy transpositional combinations, which create sets that relate to the octatonic collection. Most of the gestures are subsets of an octatonic collection, while others generate entire octatonic collections. The sets that relate to an octatonic collection are listed in chronological order in Table 1. There are a number of sets in Profound that relate to octatonic collections, which can lend itself to an octatonic reading of the work. However, as can be seen in the table, there is not a consistent or extended use of an octatonic collection. Instead, Druckmann moves freely among collections. It is not octatonicism that relates musical materials to each other in this work. Rather, it is the compositional techniques that generate these octatonic subsets that are more musically significant. The ability to understand octatonic collections as a result of TC have been addressed by several authors. These authors suggest that while the octatonic collection is on the musical surface, it is the operations that generate the collection that is of more compositional importance. In this way, these theorists are privileging motivic content, much as I am highlighting the importance of the sound-producing gestures of these motives. 
identifying octatonic collections tells us little about a work, much as noting that a symphony is an A major tells us little about the symphony. Sound producing gestures stemming from operations on motives reflect the close relationships among various motives and ultimately tells us more about the composition. Many have noted the way that Druckmann composed in an idiomatic manner for the instrument. The commission was led by Morsch, Stevens, and Stout, three of the world's leading marimbists at the time, and it is likely that they gave insight into how to write for the instrument. Additionally, Druckmann's son, Daniel Druckmann, is an accomplished percussionist. The visual element of playing percussion in instruments is an important part of performance. It is clear from this composition that Druckmann was writing with the physicality of the instrument in mind and in a way that visually emphasized the relationships of motives. By limiting musical relationships in pitch space, the performer physically embodies this imagined musical space. Through the use of explicit and obscured inversional symmetry, transpositional combinations, and fuzzy transpositional combinations, Druckmann creates a work with musical material that's tightly controlled. In the context of marimba performance, as has been noted above, musical materials that are related by inversion and transpositions are highly salient through the marimbist. By making musical materials visually salient through the performer, Druckmann highlights musical relationships in physical time and space that might otherwise be overlooked. And we've come to the conclusion of my paper. And um, just as a ending thought, um, this research does have uh, applications for the performer. We have the composer and we have the audience members. And we talked a lot about how audience members can think about these types of things while they are uh, watching performances. For the performer, the performer can uh, make judgments on how to stick things and how to visually play things based on this knowledge. And also composers can use this as a generating idea to, uh, to use in their compositions. Um, my list of sources is right here. And if anyone of you has any questions, uh, please feel free to email me. My email is right here, mbarnspercussion at gmail.com. I would love to hear any questions you might have and get back with you. All right. Thanks for uh, watching.